Hi, I'm Amanda Olson from IntimateRose.com, and as a pelvic floor physical therapist, I see women in the clinic all the time that are experiencing urinary incontinence and pelvic organ prolapse and um, pelvic pain and um, all sorts of different con conditions related to the pelvic floor. So what we're going to do today is discuss what the pelvic floor actually is. And so what I'm going to do is just provide you with a bit of a, a tour of the pelvis in general and what the pelvic floor does and why it's so important to us. This is going to be part one of a three-part series on um, introductory to the pelvic floor and how to do Kegels properly and when they are appropriate to do. So um, what we're going to start with is the outside structures of the pelvis. This is the pelvis. Um, this is the front. And um, what we're looking at here first is the bony structure. So this being the pubic bone here. And um, the iliac crests here on the side are the bony structures that are on top of the hip. The, the femur is the leg bone, comes in and attaches here. So just to give you some orientation, um, the leg bone being right here and the back here. So this is the sacrum and here's your spine. Um, one thing to note is that the low back and the pelvis are married to each other and they are very reliant on each other to be doing their job properly. Um, and the pelvic floor is sort of the glue holding this whole thing together. Um, the reason being that the pelvic floor attaches onto the tailbone here, this white structure is the tailbone and the pelvic floor wraps all the way to the front. Now certainly we have tendons and ligaments and other muscles that are part of this um, whole uh, anatomical structure, um, but the pelvic floor is a very important component of all of that. Oftentimes too, um, people can experience low back pain and um, they've tried everything under the sun, um, strengthening their abdominals and nothing's really working. Um, I get those people referred to me in the clinic and it's because they have pelvic floor weakness. Um, they, the part of the core, the deepest part of the core is the pelvic floor. And so um, we'll touch more on that in a moment, but I'm gonna orient you to the key organs in the pelvis. So looking at it over the top, we have the bladder in the very front. So again, here's the pubic bone and just right off into the pelvis is the bladder, the uterus, and the rectum in the back. Um, you can see that these organs are very close neighbors and they share a tent wall essentially that separates them. Um, and so they are very, very uh, reliant on each other to be functioning properly. And um, if one of them becomes irritated, they like the, the bowel, um, it can affect the other structures. And the pelvic floor envelops all three of these features. So in women, here's the pelvic floor coming in on the bottom view. So um, we've got the pelvic floor starting up here on the pubic bone and it comes down and around the urethra, the vagina, and the rectum. So three distinct layers of the pelvic floor. The first one being the superficial muscles of the pelvic floor. And that's essentially what you're seeing here is the muscles coming around, the muscles coming out in the triangle like this, and then encircling around the rectum. Then there's a layer of fascia that connects it to the deep portion of the pelvic floor. So I'm gonna take our organs out. So the deep layer, is this layer right in here. Um, it's everything in red. Uh, this white here is just demonstrating some fascia underneath that muscle. So coming off the tailbone, the tailbone being right here, um, we have a, a sling essentially of muscles. Everything you see in red is muscle. And again, circling the rectum, the vagina, and the urethra here. So you can see that with these muscles encircling around the ends of those organs, they're providing a stop closure around the urethra, around the vagina, around the rectum. So if you're experiencing leaking, uh, one of the reasons may be that the pelvic floor is weak. Um, something interesting to consider, um, here is the bladder and it sits right in the front. Um, another reason for 
leaking urine can be having scars over the top of that bladder that are putting pressure there. Um, the most common one being a cesarean section scar. So here's that scar. That scar sits just right on top of the pubic bone there. Um, and it can grow in very thick and very dense. So the interesting thing about scars is they are by and large genetic as to how we lay them down. Um, and some people just make scar tissue thicker than others. The other thing about having a cesarean section scar is we're not supposed to lift things, but it's awfully hard to have a baby and not lift that baby. Um, so putting stress and strain on that scar can cause that scar to grow in a little bit thicker and it can grow in and put pressure on the top of that bladder. So when you're looking at what that creates, it creates a high pressure situation above the bladder. And if you couple that with a weakened pelvic floor from carrying a baby for nine months, or even in the situation that you were in labor and you were pushing and ended up having a C-section later, then you've got stretching and possibly some tearing of the pelvic floor coupled with high pressure above, and that can result in some leakage. So um, in that instance, um, it can be very helpful to see a physical therapist specializing in pelvic floor because they can help you address some of that scarring above um, with some really gentle manual techniques. The other scar that really commonly can present some problems um, with this delicate balance is the appendix scar, and that lies right here in the right lower part of the abdomen. And depending on what era you had your appendectomy, that scar can be rather sizable. Uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago, those scars were quite large and quite long. If you had an appendix recently, those scars from that surgery are quite small. Um, but either way, again, people lay down scar tissue differently. And that scar tissue here in that right lower part can put pressure on the bladder, um, on the uterus, and um, that can create pressure that can push on the pelvic floor. And if the pelvic floor, again, is not strong, we can get instances of incontinence or prolapse even, um, coupled with other um, issues in the pelvis, but that's uh, often something that's simultaneously happening. And again, that would be a good reason to go see a pelvic floor physical therapist. Um, one last thing when we're talking about um, the pelvic floor and its anatomy and its structure is to be aware of how posture um, relates to all of this. So here's the side view of the pelvis. And this would be a person sitting in relatively good posture. So they're sitting upright, the spine's up nice and tall, but if someone were say slumped in their desk chair for several hours on end, that pelvis would be rocked back like this. Um, what that would do to the pelvic floor underneath here is that would put these structures in an elongated position. And when you couple that with several hours and multiply that by several days, if not years, um, that can create weakness in the pelvic floor. It can also create imbalance between the back structures where you would be slumped back and resting um, versus the front structures. And when we're talking about incontinence, um, it, that can happen. Uh, urinary incontinence would be um, leaking out of the front, obviously, um, versus fecal incontinence ha happening out the back. So when we are looking at um, incontinence in general, if you're not experiencing issues with fecal incontinence, we want to be able to focus on the front fibers. And I just want to orient you to what that means here. So again, here's the pelvic floor, the front fibers being the ones that go around specifically the urethra. So when we talk more in, in the videos to come about doing Kegels, we'll be talking about doing Kegels in different ways to address different problems. Not all Kegels are created the same, and they don't all address the same issue. So you have that to look forward to. So be sure to visit IntimateRose.com and um, check out the vaginal weights. Um, they are going to be brought up in our future videos as a method of strengthening the pelvic floor.